You know when you buy a car, they're going to be here and they're going to stand behind your purchase. Um, my family has bought cars from them and uh, I will continue buying a car from them because everything I've ever experienced here has been a good experience. I think the best thing I enjoy about coming in here is that they treat me like a human being. A lot of courtesy, treat me with respect, um, give me outstanding service. So that's why I enjoy coming here. I'm spoiled. I am spoiled here. And I don't go to other dealerships. Wouldn't it be great if all our customers were enthused about their Buick dealership experience as those we just heard from? Enthused customers are loyal customers, and loyal customers are the lifeblood of Buick and every Buick dealership. The service department is where that loyalty can be grown and cultivated, or just as easily extinguished. What tips the scales? What is it that keeps owners returning to the same dealership again and again to buy and service their vehicles? What is it that makes customers recommend a dealership to their family and friends? Well, as a Buick dealer, you already know the answer. It's customer care that says your family. Providing that level of quality service means that we must continually strive to meet and exceed our customer expectations. And today's service customers have a definite idea about how they expect to be treated. When I come to pick up my car after service, I don't expect to have to walk a half a mile or in good weather or bad because walking back into the back lot isn't you know, the best place to be in any way. And it's kind of hard to find your car back there. So I expect it to be in a reasonable location when I pick it up. If I come in and my automobile is not ready, um, I feel that uh, they should offer me a, a, a free courtesy car uh, and apologize for the inconvenience of my having to come down and the car isn't ready and then to call me at my place of business when it is ready. When I come in to pick up my car, um, I expect, yes, to have it washed. My car is white. Um, I take very good care of my car. I don't like to have any marks or anything on it. So yes, I do expect for it to be clean, washed, and ready for when, it, when I'm told that it's going to be ready. I'd like to be in and out of here within 15 minutes, inclusive of paying my bill, picking up the paperwork, getting the car, dropped off for me to drive out of here. These are the kinds of challenges Buick service departments must continually meet and exceed to be successful in today's marketplace. We know that's not always easy to accomplish. The bar is constantly being raised as customers demand ever higher levels of quality service. Enterprising dealerships find ways to provide it. In some cases, many of you even anticipate what your customers will want. Well, to help your dealership gain an important competitive edge in delivering quality customer service, Buick has taken the lead in establishing the Quality Plus service experience process. There's nothing else quite like it in the industry. With input from customers and many of you, our dealers, we have documented a 15-step process that focuses on and provides solid guidance for every key interaction in the customer service experience. From the first contact when a customer makes an appointment until they're followed up after the service visit. We've based the process on a firm foundation, GM's customer satisfaction life cycle expectations and standards. As such, the process is a practical tool to assist you in meeting GM's service standards and in building life cycle relationships with your customers. The Quality Plus Service Experience process anticipates the questions that your service customers will be asked on the new Warranty Service Satisfaction Survey. With this process in place at your dealership, your customer satisfaction scores should be greatly enhanced. In fact, the process provides critical and timely assistance as you work toward continuous improvement at every customer contact point. As in many Buick dealerships, your service department may already be performing most or all of the 15 steps of the process. Most dealers believe they currently are, but when they actually review each step of the process in their own dealership, they often find some steps are being omitted. In fact, our experience shows it's rare, even in the best dealerships, that every step with every customer is consistently performed. Ensuring that all of the 15 steps are being performed consistently will build customer satisfaction and owner loyalty. For this Quality Plus service experience to succeed in your dealership, the wholehearted commitment and participation of every service employee, especially those who have contact with customers, is needed. 
By implementing the process and consistently following through, you can create the service excellence your customers expect and gain the rewards of repeat and referral business. Remember, our goal is to differentiate Buick and your dealership by providing a quality plus service experience for every customer, every time. It's a goal that we can achieve together. In the next few minutes, we'll overview the 15 steps of the Quality Plus service experience process. As you watch the video, be aware of the areas in which your dealership can improve its performance and where you, in particular, can make positive changes. Here then is the process. Step one is to offer service on an appointment and non-appointment basis. This is usually a matter of dealership policy. However, you have to make sure that your customers are aware of the policy. Step two is welcome the customer and, if appropriate, apologize for any inconvenience, such as a comeback. The service consultant is usually the first contact the customer has when they drive in. Be sure your greeting is timely and courteous. Step three is to communicate professionally and effectively with the customer. This is especially critical during the write-up, when you must gather important information about the problems your customer is experiencing with the vehicle. Step four is to discuss alternate transportation options with the customer. All Buick dealers can take advantage of Buick's courtesy transportation program. Providing quality care requires that no customer is left without transportation if he or she needs it. Step five is to keep the customer apprised of the progress on the vehicle. This is especially important when the service consultant is unable to give a diagnosis and time estimate up front. Step six is to complete service work on time as promised. To make sure that happens, it's important to understand the capabilities of the technicians and how long repairs take. Don't promise something you can't deliver. Step seven is clean the car. Many Buick dealerships in all parts of the country wash and vacuum their service customers' vehicles. Many others provide free car wash coupons. At the very least, any smudges and grease marks must be wiped clean before the car is delivered to the owner. Step eight requires the service consultant to verify that the paperwork is complete. Ideally, this is done before a customer returns to pick up the vehicle to reduce last-minute scrambling and avoid mistakes. Step nine is notify the customer when the vehicle is ready to be picked up. This applies to both waiting and non-waiting customers. At this time, the service consultant should review with the customer the work that's been done and the total cost. Step 10 is wait on the customer immediately when he or she returns to pick up the vehicle. This means the service consultant should be available to greet returning customers to minimize delays. Step 11 is explain the work that was done to the degree the customer wants. Some customers want to know every detail, while others require little explanation. In any case, the service consultant should offer to go over the work performed with every customer. Step 12 is to perform cashiering in a pleasant and efficient manner. The way the cashier handles the customer at this final transaction can make or break the service visit. When customers are treated well by the cashier, they're likely to feel good about the whole service experience. Step 13 is deliver the car curbside for the customer. The lot attendant or porter can ensure an excellent send-off for the customer by delivering and presenting the car in a convenient and clean pickup area. Step 14 is thank the customer for their business. A sincere thank you goes a long way toward building customer goodwill. This step applies to anyone who has contact with the customer, particularly the service consultant, cashier, and the lot attendant who delivers the car to the customer. The final step Step 15 is to promptly follow up with the customer. Quality care doesn't end when the customer drives away. Surveying the customer by mail or phone after the service visit lets them know you're concerned about their satisfaction and that their business is important to you. That's the Quality Plus service experience in a nutshell. The second half of this video details each of the steps further.
The objective of this process is to help you deliver a customer-focused service experience every time. Consistency is the key. Providing customers with quality care is not a one-time event, but a continuous activity. It means being friendly, efficient, reliable, courteous, and professional with every customer, every time. No days off can be taken. No exceptions can be made. We have a process here and we try to follow it the same way every time. Um, I think doing, we make things a habit um, and that's what helps us work as a team is just doing things the same time after time and then the customers expect that also. Working together as a team with each person taking responsibility for their part is essential in building your credibility with customers and earning their trust in you and your entire service organization. Teamwork's a, a, a must. Um, you know, just, just an example, uh, one service visit, how many people does that customer uh, touch in, in that visit? Uh, in our dealership, they pull in for service and, and probably the first person to greet them will be our service greeter. Uh, you know, from there, our service advisor goes to our technician, uh, goes to the car washers, okay? The, finally, the customer goes back with the service advisor um, and into the cashier. And the last step is, is actually the porter who's holding the door and thanking for their business. Any one of those steps can turn a, a, a positive visit into a negative one. So, so I think teamwork is, is a, a real plus. Besides consistency and teamwork, there is one other factor that will affect the level of service excellence you provide and that is how committed you are to continuous improvement. We have found that the synergy, that the, the combination of everyone else's ideas really makes for a better organization. And if you can have people, again, we're talking about the people that are like, uh, that will bring the car around after it's being washed. If they come up with an idea and say, hey, why don't we do this? We can do a better job. They're going to feel better. The job will be done better. If you really want to achieve high levels of quality customer care, it starts with the frontline employee. We feel as though the person who knows uh, how to improve the work is the person who is doing the work. So we have to go to them on a continuous basis and ask, how is it going? We also do that with customers. We ask them. But those two sets of feedback data are very important for continuous improvement. It is the kind of information which allows you to take that quantum leap and make uh, very small or very large improvements in your organization. By adopting the Quality Plus service experience process and refining it for your own dealership, in short, making it your own, you can create the service excellence your customers expect and earn their support, loyalty, and repeat business for a lifetime. <laughs>
and non-appointment basis. This means service appointments are timely and convenient. An appointment system will help ensure that your customers can easily schedule their service visits and be assured of prompt priority service. Giving them the opportunity to uh, make an appointment or, or just coming in off the street, what we want to do is be able to accommodate people. Uh, it helps our workload when we know what we're scheduling for the day. Uh, if someone comes off the street, one of our regular customers, and he has a, a coolant leak or a water pump problem, we want to be able to get him in also and take care of him. Uh, we don't want to turn anything away. We want to make sure that we're going to provide a service and we'll, we'll make a slot for that customer. So either way, when you roll into Children's Buick, uh, you're going to be taken care of. We're going to acknowledge you and we're not going to put you on the back burner. When I first bring my vehicle in, I want somebody to recognize the fact that I'm there. I want somebody just, I just, I want somebody just acknowledge if they just know more than wave and be with you in a minute. That's, that's what I look for. I feel when I get home, if I have the same problem that I brought my car in for, that it is an inconvenience and I would expect an apology from them. I know everybody's human and we all make errors, but I would expect a little apology and, and to get it fixed right the next time. Step two is welcome the customer and if appropriate, apologize for any inconvenience. This means immediately acknowledge and greet the customer in a friendly, professional manner. Normally what I will do is I will get up from the desk, walk over the car, open the car door for the person, uh, bring the car in, and you know, greet them with a smile, uh, ask them how they're doing, and then ask them what we can do to service their car. Step two also requires that, if appropriate, you express empathy for any inconvenience the customer has suffered. This is particularly important in the case of a comeback or if the customer's vehicle has been towed in. It's important to apologize um, and, and show empathy with them. Um, in a situation where they have to come back, uh, you're wasting their time basically by not doing it right the first time, which is one of the most important things to do in our business and service. Uh, if you do things right the first time, people will tend to come back more often than not. You know, we got to make sure that they know we're sorry that it happened and to get it done correctly for them. I expect for them to find out exactly why I'm here. Um, I expect for them to be able to tell me an approximate um, time of when this problem can be resolved, when I can have my card back. Um, whatever costs are going to be involved, I'd like to know that ahead of time before work is actually performed. I want to know everything up front. I want them to be honest and upfront with me. I don't want to find something out later after my car has been sitting there. Step three is communicate professionally and effectively with a customer. First of all, this means treating all customers equally while respecting their diverse needs. Women and minorities, Park Avenue owners, and Skylark owners should all receive the same high quality treatment. Everybody should be treated equally as a customer if they have a Riviera all the way down to a Skylark. They invested a lot of money and time in the car and choosing a dealership like Joyce Buick to come in and have their service done properly, fast, and efficiently. Communicating professionally and effectively also means you must listen to the customer and ask pertinent questions. Discuss their vehicle's needs based on the vehicle's history and accurately note the customer's concerns on the repair order. When the customer tells you uh, what's wrong uh, with the car and you're listening correctly, the first thing you want to do is reiterate to the customer what your understanding of their problem is. And then once you understand that, what helps out with, with uh, technicians and others is to ask questions as far as if the car's stalling, when's it stalling, how's it stalling, uh, just to make sure you get everything asked. And it also makes the customer you know, feel that hey, they, they're trying their best to, to find out what's wrong with my car. A Buick best practice for ensuring accurate repair orders is to perform a walk around of the vehicle with the customer. We try to walk around the car to uh, look for damage you know, and advise people of something that you might see. You might see a bad tire there, something that they didn't expect, and you can pick it up. Or you might see that their uh, state inspection stickers expired and they had no idea about it, and you can pick that up too. Uh, I think it's important to do that while they're there. So they, in, in the event that there's damage to the car or something like that, you can let them know at that point because they may not know. And uh, 
if they come back and see the car and then see the problem without knowing it beforehand, well, then actually we're to blame because we, we, we don't have a way to guide against that. Step three further requires that the service consultant quote reasonable time and cost estimates and obtain the customer's approval to proceed with the work. An accurate time <clears throat> as far as when the car is ready is probably really the most important thing to an owner because when they bring their vehicle in they want a definite time my car will be ready at 4 p.m. and they want you to stand by that. Uh, they can get very upset when it's not done on time and getting car done in time is very important. Uh, as far as total cost of an estimate, it's very important because if I do something on an owner's car and they don't have any idea about it because it's 200 bucks, uh, they're likely to fly off the handle. So it's important to let them know ahead of time what the repairs are going to be, the total cost of repairs, and the time will be finished and then have, it have the job done at that time and then they're very well pleased when that happens that way. It's very important to me to have a means of transportation. Uh, I think probably the thing that I dislike most about servicing my car or having it serviced is to have to sit around twiddling my thumbs while they're doing it. I know it's necessary and it has to be done, but I'd like to be someplace else while they're doing it. Step four is to discuss alternate transportation options with the customer. Because it's inconvenient for most customers to be without their vehicle, they should be offered alternate transportation that gets them where they want to go. To offer an alternate transportation I think is very important. We have a uh, shuttle van service here that goes to various parts of the town. Uh, we go to one section of the town two days a week. We go to another section of the city three days a week. We offer a shuttle service to the local mall. Uh, we offer pickup service back from that mall. We have a rental car service here and we do use them if the car has to stay overnight or if it has to stay for a long period of time. Usually it's, if it stays for a long time it stays overnight. Um, say for instance if there's not a part available in town you have to overnight the part. Put the customer in a rental car, they get a car, they keep transportation and, they're, and they stay happy until you get the part here. If there are going to be delays you should be informed of those delays and uh, give us some estimate is how long they need to hold that car and keep it. Step five is to keep the customer apprised of the progress on the vehicle. This requires that the service consultant actively check the progress of the vehicle and immediately inform the customer of any changes in its repair status or completion. It's very important to keep the customer aware of what's going on with this car. If, you haven't, if you're doing like a big job that takes four hours to do, uh, you got to call the customer two hours and let them know what's going on with the car just so they, they're aware that you are working on it, you're not sidelining it. Whenever I write up a car, I have a route sheet that I have to follow. Uh, on the route sheet, I keep the na customer's name, phone number, their car number, uh, what's being done to their car, and I also keep track of when my promise time is of getting the car out. That way I keep track of who I need to call and when I need to call them. When you call a customer back uh, and when you found other problems with the car, number one, you, you explain to them what caused the problem. It could have had two different faults. You fix the first problem. It's hard for some people to take because computer components or injectors or fuel pumps are very expensive and it's, it's kind of time consuming. Uh, you just have to go step by step with the customer and explain what happened. Having my car serviced uh, on time as promised is very important to me because I'm very time efficient and if they tell me the car will be done at 4 o'clock, I expect the car to be done at 4 o'clock and when I walk in here and get the keys, you know, that's important to me. Step six is to complete service work on time as promised. While the service consultant is not responsible for completing the work himself, your responsibility is to immediately notify the customer if the work will be delayed. If a time commitment is not upheld, the situation should be remedied without any inconvenience or additional cost to the customer. The system for keeping the promise times is basically with me and the dispatcher. Um, I let the dispatcher know in the computer as far as a promise time when I promise the customer the car. Um, and he does his best to get done on time. If it falls behind the time, the computer will let him know and then he'll turn around and let me know to get the car out on time. If the car takes longer than what I thought it would, I go into the customer as soon as I find out, I tell the customer and then I also offer him uh, a means of transportation. Uh, depending on how long it's going to be, if it's a short time, I'll say, can I get you a ride to a mall? 
Uh, if it's a long time, can get your ride home. Um, or if it's going to be overnight, can I provide you with a rental car to keep, to keep everything moving along? I have to go out and deal with people, and so when I bring a car in, I expect the car to be clean. I, I don't want grease in the steering wheel. I don't want dirt on the seats. Uh, I want the car to be clean. Step seven is clean the car. At a minimum, the car should be as clean as it was when the customer dropped it off. That includes removing all tags and protective coverings before the car is delivered to the customer. To exceed your customer's expectations, clean the car, both inside and out. Customers expect to get their vehicles back in good shape, at least in the, in the condition that they brought them in, in you know, uh, cleanliness-wise. Um, we have a car wash available. We're fortunate we have that available. We can catch things, you know. We do put plastic and uh, paper in the cars when the cars come in, but that gets shuffled, you know, in the process of getting cars worked on. And we're fortunate that we have a car wash available where they catch anything where some grease may have gotten here or there, that kind of thing. Customers' expectations of their vehicles when they bring them in here, no one expects their car to be washed. And uh, we try, in most instances, I'd say 90% of the vehicles that come in the building, uh, excluding fast lubes, if someone's in for a quick oil change, uh, you're, they're in a hurry, you really can't get it. But if someone's left their car, every effort is given to get that car washed for the customer. And you'd be surprised at the smiling faces you get. And just a, a little thanks, that's all it is. It's just soap and water, and it, it's great. And uh, we put a little tag on the windshield, thanking them for this service. And, you know, that we, we really enjoy it, and we wash the car. I expect my invoice to include, um, of course, you know, the normal, the date that it came in, um, what service was actually done, um, if there was other items that were checked, if they were okay, I expect for it to indicate that it's okay. Um, basically, I just expect whatever that they've done to have it on there and the cost. And if there's any warranties or anything involved, I expect for that to be right there in my paperwork. So that way I can keep it in my glove compartment with the rest of my warranty. Step 8 requires the service consultant to verify that the paperwork is complete. This means that the dealership must have a process in place to notify the service consultant when the paperwork is completed and waiting for the customer. At that point, the service consultant verifies that all work has been completed. The invoice clearly describes the work that was performed, and the invoice is consistent with the cost estimate. Well, the best way to verify uh, all the paperwork is done is, number one, go to the technician, make the, uh, sure they have the three C's filled out properly, uh, go through, get your labor time guide, fill out the uh, paperwork, put it through uh, our computer system, and uh, make sure, double check everything, triple check sometimes, make sure everything's right so the customer, when they come in, it flows very easily. The invoice, um as far as what the customer sees should include um, a full broken down listing of parts and labor, um, everything that they're paying for naturally. They're going to want a breakdown of, of what their money is being spent on. If I bring the car in and we leave a rather open-ended time to pick it up, if they call me when it is ready within an hour or two that it can be picked up then I can organize my schedule. Step nine is to notify the customer when the vehicle is ready to be picked up. Even if you've already given the customer an approximate time, call them when the car is ready to preview the work that was performed and to discuss the method of pickup. At that time, you should confirm all the work that was performed, review any work that was discovered but not performed, discuss the reason if any planned work was not performed, and suggest a future appointment to complete the work. You should also discuss any deviations from the original cost estimate and explain the pickup procedure the customer will use, especially if the customer will arrive after hours or if you offer an express checkout service. My system for notifying a customer that their car is uh, completed is uh, if they're waiting, uh, we have on the invoice we have a pla or on the RO we have a place where we write waiter on it so the cashier can page them up. If a customer um, is not a waiting customer, when the paperwork comes through and shows up on our desk, then we call the customer. Once we've reviewed it, we call the customer and let them know that the uh, car is finished. And, and then if they have any questions at that point, 
we can answer them before they come down. If a customer needs to pick their car up after hours or on a, uh, a day that we're not here, usually I like to uh, confirm with them, get a credit card over the phone, uh, wait on the phone with the customer and, and make sure the transaction has gone through so they, they know everything's uh, gone properly. When I return to pick up my vehicle, I expect to be waited in a fairly quick manner if I am here at the time they have estimated for the car to be done. Step 10 is to wait on the customer immediately when he or she has returned to pick up the vehicle. There should be minimal waiting to pick up a vehicle. If the service consultant is busy when the customer approaches, at least acknowledge the customer with eye contact and a gesture. I think it's real important when a customer comes up, comes in to pick up their car, what you want to do again is it's just as important as you walked up to them the first time. You want to acknowledge them. You may want to review their bill with them. If I'm on the phone, I'll wave to them, I acknowledge them. If I needed to talk to them maybe about their bill and they were in a hurry to leave, I'll try to follow up the next day and call them and just say, hey, I'm sorry I missed you when you came in. Is there anything you need to discuss about your bill? I think that's real important. Normally when I pick up my car, I'd like to have a service advisor available to discuss any of the any problems that might have arisen during the maintenance work, yes. Step 11 is to explain the work that was done to the degree the customer wants. That means the service consultant spends the time to further explain the work that was performed. At the same time, you should ask the customer if you can answer any questions about their vehicle's features, maintenance, or operation. Even a, a clear repair order um, can be confusing. Um, if a customer goes out of here not knowing what was done to their car and where their money went, that's not going to leave a good taste in their mouth. They, they like to know where their money was spent. Um, going into some of the details of, of what something does, how it works, and so on will go a long ways with that customer. It's all a part of, of getting them comfortable with you, comfortable with coming back to the dealership, you know, happy with your service. You should review every repair order because if they come in for one job and you have recommendations for their next service, then you should go over it and just point it out rather than if a customer goes home and say, hey, I noticed on the recommendations you recommended I needed a four-wheel alignment. I wish you'd let me know when we were there I could have made an appointment. So it is important. We always like to uh, ask our customers if they have any questions or any, uh, if they'd like to go for a test drive or if they think they should uh, have any other type of service done. If, if they do, we like to sit them down or just walk out to the car with them and explain the different items that may be needed at next service. My expectations of the cashier, um, when my name has been called and I'm told to go to the cashier, I expect for, of course, the cashier to be friendly and courteous. I expect for all my paperwork to be there. Um, and I expect to have my total and, and done, you know, very efficiently and, and fast. The cashier should not be a long process. Step 12 is to perform cashiering in a pleasant and efficient manner. The cashier makes an important contribution to a positive service experience for your customers, whether they were in for a quick lube or a major repair. For many customers, paying their bill is a crucial point during their service visit. Delivering quality care here means the cashier acknowledges the customer with eye contact and a smile. When a customer comes up, I always greet them. I look them in the eye and I smile. And I try to have a laid back approach, easy going, and also be very efficient with the paperwork. So that gives them an air of confidence and experience. The cashier has several important duties, which include calling the porter to deliver the vehicle, discussing and finalizing the method of payment, involving the appropriate personnel if any questions or problems arise, providing the customer a copy of the invoice, directing the customer to the exact location of their car, and finally, thanking the customer for their business. When I get the ticket, um, I page them up, I greet them, I tell them how much it is by pointing to the total, and usually that's when they ask me questions or I ask them if they have any questions. I usually go over the ticket with them if they need to. Most customers, they know how to read the ticket and usually they'll ask for the service advisor if they have any specific questions. I usually page the service advisor up if he's not here already. And then I separate the ticket and I give them change or whatever. And then I page the car up and uh, put a mint on the receipt and 
say thank you and have a good day. It, it would work out the best if the car was pulling up the minute they got out the door. So that's usually what I strive for. So as soon as, as, soon as the paperwork is, is separated, I usually pick up the phone and page. So by the time that I give them the receipt and they go out the door, the car is coming up. Usually takes about a minute and 30 seconds for the car to come up, so that's how I try to time it. The cashier's counter can be a busy place at the end of the day, so it's important to have a process in place to handle high traffic times. When there's more than, there's three or more customers waiting in line, that's when I have the ability to call somebody up. And that's comforting to know that if, if anything happens up here, all I have to do is, is, is call someone up and they're there for me. And then we work together to, to help the customers. When it's really busy, um, usually in the late afternoon, a service advisor sometimes comes up and sits next to me and he answers questions that customers might have. When I come to pick up my car, um, it's very impressive to have the vehicle brought right up to curbside. Um, in the inclement weather here in our area, um, you know, that's, that's a nice pampering uh, thing that we very much like. Step 13 is to deliver the car curbside to the customer. Customers not only want their cars delivered to them, they want them delivered promptly. So there should be a minimal wait to pick up a vehicle. I think delivering the car to the customer curbside has a psychological effect really. They, they feel that you're pampering them, which we want to do. And uh, we don't just do it because it looks good. We, we want them to feel, like I said earlier, we want them to feel like this is a good experience here. Delivering quality curbside service requires attention to details. The lot attendant or porter should remove all the servicing materials placed in and on the car. And the vehicle should be conveniently parked for bringing the vehicle to the customer or for after hours pickup. An excellent touch is when the porter presents the car to the customer and makes a small show of it, which can be as impressive as the first time the car was delivered to the customer after the sale. By me show, um, pulling out the stuff and wiping off the car, I think that uh, shows them that we care about you know, their car and that it's just not just another vehicle out there, you know, that we you don't want it to come out looking good and that we hope that it, they're happy. I think it's important mainly just so they leave with a good feeling, you know, because I'm the last person they see really, so even if their experience was good the whole way through, if they leave with a bad feeling after talking to me, then that's probably what they'll remember. Another indicator of quality care is when, based on the climate, the lot attendant either warms the car up or cools it down for the customer. Yeah, here in Arizona, especially uh, when it's real hot, we try and, uh, when we get in the car, we turn on the air right away and when we bring it up, we leave it running so the car is cool or hopefully a little cooler than when we brought it up because it does get real hot. In the winter, when we go out to get a car for a customer, the car is cleaned off. If it's really snowed in or it's uh, really icy or the car is cold, the car will be brought inside and we have two large heaters over the entrance and exit and we'll park the car there and let the car thaw. It only takes maybe a minute to two minutes for that car to thaw out. Uh, no customers to scrape windows, no customers to clean snow off their car. That is all done for them. It is important for me to be thanked for my business because this is a repeat business. I bring my car in two or three times a year and I want to know that it is appreciated. Step 14 is thank the customer for their business. It's important that everyone who has contact with the customer, especially the service consultant, the cashier, and the porter, ensures that the customer walks away with a genuine feeling of appreciation for their business. I think it's important to thank a customer for his business, let him know that you appreciate uh, their business, and you know, again, that lends, lends uh, uh, credibility to the work that you did. If you thank them for the business, if, if you're there to thank them for the business, you know, when they return for the car, they know that you're confident about what you did, about the work that you did. I feel that you should thank a customer for anything they do here because they're spending their money here and, and they bought a quality car and they want quality service and everything and we want them to feel that uh, we're appreciative, which we are, of, what they, of bringing their service here to us. It's important to thank a customer for their business because there are dozens of dealerships around here and they are bringing their hard-earned money here. And that's, Im that's important because for some reason they want to come here more than any other dealership. And usually they could go to a, a, a quick lube down the corner and pay half the price. 
but for some reason they come here and I think it's because they're treated they're treated very special here. It is uh, very appreciated if there has been something major wrong with my automobile and uh, it's been serviced, it's working, but a couple days later I do get a phone call from the service department just to check and verify that everything's working okay. To me that shows good follow through and that they really do care about your business. The last step in the process, step 15, is to promptly follow up with the customer. Whether you use a postcard survey or follow up by phone to check on their service experience, customers will appreciate your concern and effort. We have a system of follow up where a customer, no matter what, if it's warranty, whether it's internal or whether it's customer pay, they all get a yellow questionnaire card and it's postmarked, no necessary postage to be put on, just drop check it off, put it in the mailbox, if there's a complaint, write it right on there. I get them daily and I review them and if there are any questions at all I will pull the repair order up, I'll look at the repair order, I will call the advisor in and have the advisor call the customers with questions. 48 hours after the customer has been in um, we pull their uh, repair order up on the screen and we call them and ask them a couple of questions, you know, were you happy with your service? Did we get you out in a timely manner? Um, were you confused about any of the charges? Um, I don't always ask the same questions. You have to be intuitive and know what people want to talk about. Sometimes they don't want a five-page quiz. They just want you to cut to the chase. How was your service? My first service was fine. Thank you for your business. Goodbye. Um, some people, they, I know them, and I've built a relationship with them, and I can say, you know, how's this or how's that or how's your son or have you been to Iowa lately or whatever the case may be. Um, so I think it's treating each customer uh, on an indiv it's, we, we treat customers on an individual basis. And that's the entire Quality Plus service experience process. Now that you know what each step of the process entails, you can better evaluate your own performance and that of your entire department. You should have a good understanding of your role in the process, whether you're a service consultant, cashier, or porter, as well as a sense of the importance of your role in the customer's service experience. Use the process to help your organization develop its full potential for delivering quality plus customer care. As you do, you'll find there are personal benefits to gain. What I get out of doing a good job for the customer is that, uh, number one, they're satisfied, N number two, I'm satisfied and I'm proud that uh, when they brought their car in here they walked out with a smile and they said, well, I'm going to be back the next time. I like helping people. It makes me feel good when I help people out. And when I help them and they're happy, that keep, makes me happy and I stay that way all day. What's in it for me, it's, it's satisfaction. Um, you can make all the money in the world, but if you know you're not pleasing people, it doesn't really mean anything. And uh, that's something you, I can feel good about working here at Children's Buick. Um, I, have a, I have their reputation to stand on and I can only make it better by doing a good job for the customer. Mm -hmm.